Right, so we are back on turn number two, actually, not turn number three of, well, Gary Grigsby's War in the East, and this is the screen that you get at the end of your turn. So, uh, the enemy takes its turn, we get a summary of the uh, the losses in battle here. Um, so some of these losses are, are, are losses due to combat, some of these losses are due to other things such as attrition. Um, one of the things that the game does model is that when, you, when say, you have trucks moving supplies, when you have uh, just units moving in general, they'll take attrition damage, and uh, what that just does is that I mean, like you know, obviously uh, as 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 these tanks drive forwards, some of them will have mechanical problems and such like that, and they'll be just kind of passively damaged like that. Um, so that's pretty much that. As you can see, uh, the front has changed by a bit now that uh, now that the turn now that. Uh, we, we switch to the Soviet side, um, some of the things being that more uh, hostile zone is converted into unhostile zone, and the Soviet uh, forces over here are now pocketed. So um, let's take a look at the, the mm, excuse me the game map overall, and let's uh, draw up a plan for turn number two. Um, so, oh, that's right, I can't really click on anything on the screen right now. Uh, the, the overall objectives are, if I turn these on, are located here. And our objectives are pretty much as such here. Um, I still want to practice encircling troops, so that's one of my uh, sub goals. What I'll try to do is that I'll try to get some movement over here to trap off this pocket. Uh, let's do let's do red this time. Um, we have a big German pocket of troops, which will be reduced here. We'll have a smaller one here. Um, we have a whole bunch of uh, retreating HQ airfields, all kind of like uh, you know massed you know, massed hordes right here that we'll have to deal with too. Um, but we'll deal with those at a later time. Right now, what I want is I want this Panzer group to move forwards and sweep upwards this one. Um, I don't think I'll go for Min Minsk directly, or rather I'll take the city just because I, I believe every turn that we don't occupy it, we lose victory points, rather the enemy gains victory points. Uh, but in the actual, you know, grand campaign, I probably won't take it so far, more or less because I want to uh, grab all of those troops right there. So that's the overall game plan. And with that said, uh, we'll try to enact exactly just that. So um, again, more so, just more so for me, practice for the actual uh, grand campaign. Uh, what I've opted to do is that I want to keep blue units moving. And but I want to uh, keep this, you know, this 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 encirclement going. So get them to move forward slightly. By the way, each uh, each town inside the game is ten kilometers of uh, of terrain. So oh, oh yeah, I want them to continue encircling enemies, but I don't want them to necessarily move uh, back or close this pocket here. And this is what happens when units are isolated, when they can't trace a, a supply line back all the way to their uh, their center of supply or any high level unit really. Um, so our, our infantry unit attacked this uh, group of tanks, the 29th Tank Division surrendered because they're low on morale, we captured uh, a, a large portion of their men over here, and we bagged 67 armored fighting vehicles, which is, to say the least, not uh, not a small number by any means. And likewise, there were, there were no combat ready units, so we just pushed all of those guys back. And we got another surrender night right there, which is good. Want to keep the, the front rolling here, so all of these guys, all the guys in uh, deep green here, will try to push forwards and we want them to try to close this pocket as best as we can. And now inside the north here, what I want to do is I want uh, I want to try to encircle these guys right here as well. Um, I try to abuse the fact that the end, edge of the game map is uh, is considered an unmovable thing, or uh, or it's it's considered neutral tile, or you know, um, how should I say, a uh, a boundary in itself. I want to try to do something like that. Get them to move forwards and to close the gap just like that. Oh, uh, that's right. There's one more uh, game mechanic that I 
did in the meantime that I hadn't told you guys about. Uh, one of the big things uh, about the Russian campaign here is the, is the fact that railroads were used to send supplies um, in mass quantities up and down the chain. And one of the things that you had to do is that the Russian railroad, uh, the, the, the rails themselves were, were bigger than what the Germans had, and obviously that creates a, a, a problem for the trains. So all of the, all of the, all of the ra Russian railroad um, said, or, you know, tiles, if you will, have to be converted into ones that the German trains can travel on. Um, because supplies for this massive, massive army is a major uh, task, what you have are these field uh, construction battalions and what these guys do is that uh, they have a set amount of movement points per turn you uh, use them to well first and foremost move around the map but also you want to uh, use them to convert the rail network from the uh, the Russian standard to the uh, to the to the to the one that's more applicable for the for this for for our forces right here so what this will do is that if I don't select anything I can show you guys the rail network here the ones in um, in in green are tiles that we can use or rather the tiles that uh, are fixed the the tiles in orange are the ones that will be ready next turn and the ones in red are obviously uh, ones that are broken that we can't transport supplies on but um, in areas where you know you don't have railroad tiles where you uh, where, where where they're broken, we have the motor pool, the, the 96k of trucks and other vehicles to transport goods or with. Um, so yeah, you can you can stretch your supplies lines like that, but overall, um, it, one of the big portions inside the game is keeping the railroads uh, going, and that's one of the portions inside the campaign where you, you truly don't want to, um, to, to slack off on, in the sense that in the northern portion, it's alright, because uh, constructing rails usually cost one points only but in the middle of the map in the southern map the the russians had i don't know maybe just two different sets of railroad networks it costs three movement points per these uh construction battalions to to do uh, to to repair them so with that said you can only repair right around 30 kilometers or so uh per turn and that doesn't add up all too fast um so that's pretty much just that so we've dealt with this portion of the map. Let's deal with the rest north, and it is time to relocate our HQs. So we'll get uh, bright green to relocate just like that. We'll get these guys to relocate um, just like that. And we'll try to get our units back in supply, and we'll get uh, some forces over here to move forwards. And when you push away enemy airfields, and when you push away enemy... Um, enemy uh, forces in general you have a chance of capturing supplies and when you capture supplies they don't actually go to the unit um on in the field they actually go to the hq unit by the way but uh it's actually quite possible to sustain your uh your your tanks in a in a in an optimal situation if you keep rolling down high uh, high value enemy airfields chances are is that you'll get like 100 tons of fuel per roll and with that said it, hey, it does add up and you do get a ton of of fuel when you do it. So that's that. Um, right now we'll send this motorized division out over here to push back some of these enemy forces just like that and we'll get them to uh, retreat here and form up with um, the other guys to keep them in supply. And that'll be that. Now let's see. Um, we'll deal with Minsk directly later on. Right now, I want to keep pushing over here. Um, and what this will do is that it'll grab us a few more surrendered enemy forces. So now that uh, now that these enemy uh, forces over here on this on this actual defensive line is uh, isolated, they'll they'll be much more susceptible to our attacks. And with that said, what I want to do here is I want to combine our units. And I want to press forwards. I want to try to push and to get as many forces of this line to surrender and to break off as possible. So combine over here, get the HQ to move down by a bit, push, force their cavalry units to retreat, and hopefully to break off. Oh, that's right, we have two more units right here. We'll send those off. Um, usually inside the scenario, your your blue forces here will be your primary pusher here. And would you look at that? So we captured twelve thousand or thirteen thousand, some roughly. Uh, yeah, enemy troops just off of that one tile alone. Not that they're isolated, and we can just truly uh, 
push this forwards just like this. And we just want all of these guys to surrender as as fast as possible, hopefully. Some of these guys will fight a fighting retreat here. And that just calls for our guys to push even harder. And what this will gradually do is that it'll force these guys into a location where, of course, that they, 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 they can't really uh, fight from anymore. And we'll just gradually reduce this pocket as is. So there we go, get this unit here, there we go, tank division surrendered that time, so that was quite a lot. And now the main thing here is that I want to, I want these infantry units to hopefully be able to keep up with the, uh, with the tanks, or rather, um, I should say keep up at a decent pace. So with that said, I'm not, I don't think I'll actually use this unit right here to reduce this pocket, I'm going to send them forwards thing is that we want these uh, these infantry units to cover the tanks as best as they can so with that said not all of them uh, can be spared for reducing pockets likewise I want this uh, blue division to move forwards here into this area right here um, one of the things that uh, that we do have to keep track of is the fact that the longer that you chain off your uh, your command lines, the more supplies don't get uh, don't get distributed. So with that said, um, for for this scenario, it's not a big issue, but for some of the later ones, it does become a uh, a problem once you get really really deep into Russia. So there we go, backline movements, we just want, eh, pretty much, we just want these guys over here in some arbitrary position. Uh, these guys right now, I'm just going to clear up the, uh, the bottom lines right here. And now, so the railroad is pretty much finished up until this white unit. With that said, I'm going to get the air bases to uh, assemble around these areas right here. And this will move our air coverage forwards, which is quite nice. Nope, oh, this one's actually all fighters. I want the fighter uh, base to be in the front, so I'll move it right over there. And now their HQ is over here, unfortunately, so we'll have to rebase, uh, or rather their HQ is inside the north, so we'll have to rebase them forwards. And over here, this is very, f like, this is uh, only a small amount of space away from the border so it won't be too terribly big of a problem so we'll move them forwards like that and i believe that concludes all of our back movement so let's move on to uh some of the tanks and the such right here right so again we want to um encircle minsk but we also want to try to Um, capture the actual city tile. So here's what we'll do. We'll get the tanks to push from behind. And I just want uh, units to force our way in like that. So perfect. This will actually uh, capture the, the tile, Minsk itself. And in addition to that, it'll also... It'll also create a, a second pocket right here, which is quite nice. And then following that, I'm going to use the uh, tanks here to roll forwards into these zones. And oh, this is actually a... Uh, only a tank battalion or so, so we'll reform this division, we'll get them to push forwards as well. So there we go. Um, let's see, we're grabbing a lot of land here, let's push away, or rather, uh, I don't want to overextend our guys all too much, so I think we'll make one movement down here. This will help uh, Cyan group bag all of the uh, the guys over there. Oh no, they're going to interdict my HQ. That's not good. 
I'm going to shift these units around because as you may have noticed, when HQs uh, get near one enemy unit, they, they automatically displace and they, they, they effectively route back, which is not something that I want. So I'll move them back uh, ourselves or I'll, I'll keep uh, one unit in front just to act as a, as a bit of a block blocker type of thing just for that. So that'll uh, help us out there. Let's see. And moving the last of our units here. What I want to do is that I also want to encircle this stuff right here. So again, um, starting from the rear forces, moving to the front. Let's get the HQ set up right there. And let's see. So there's not much we can do about the actual airfield itself. These units are over here. These units are over here. Let's get um, let's get these guys moving first. So we'll send them off into this lightly uh, wooded area. Wood area. Push on these paratroopers. Force them back. Force them back. Push him just like that. Get the HQ to move forwards. Get the tanks to come on in. I'm gonna get this tank to uh, tank division to come right between these two units. Um, let's see. Oh, their airfield where their airfields are starting to recover from the looks of it. They are starting to make a few minor runs, which is kind of troubling. So there. We managed to encircle another blob of these guys. And furthermore, we have more vehicles, so I'm going to shift them towards the back end of the Soviet forces here. And now, I really hope that these uh, are actually and shimmy these tank forces back because now they're kind of out of supply. Uh, actually, you know what? These forces right here, they should have um, supplies. And one thing that's, uh, that's kind of neat is that if these towns and cities, escapes have supply stores, you can actually take from them instead of from the HQ's uh, deposit. So I think that's actually the end of this turn, pretty much. We've, uh, we managed to encircle yet another portion of enemy forces around Minsk because uh, there's still a lot of troops fleeing inside the uh, the marshes over here which unfortunately we can't deal uh, or you know deal too much with but that's pretty much just that and we've uh, well we've taken a large portion of the map so that is pretty much just that right so we'll move on we'll get the Soviets to do their turn and we'll be back with uh, well the final episode very very shortly here